The Forest Cloaked Princess Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived a queen so beautiful that the three worlds had never seen such beauty. The queen and the king lived happily, ruling over their kingdom. But one day, great misfortune befell them, as the queen became very sick. Doctor, there has to be something that we can do. We have tried every possible remedy, Your Highness, but there is simply nothing we can do. Her Highness the Queen wishes to see you, Your Majesty. Dear! Stop bothering the doctors, husband. Nothing will happen to you. What must come to pass must come to pass. No! A time will come when you must marry again. Never! It won't be easy for you, so I shall give you time to get used to my absence. Promise me that if you marry again, you shall only marry a woman as beautiful as I am. Promise me. Nobody can be as beautiful as you are. Love makes people look beautiful. Take care of our daughter. That night, the queen passed on. The king was grief-stricken, for he truly loved his wife. For years, the king did not even think of marriage, until one day, his courtiers came to him. Your Majesty, the women of this land feel as though there is no one representing them, hearing them. Men are just not as adept as women are to take care of the issues of women and children in the kingdom. So, what do you think we must do? Your Majesty, forgive our temerity, but our kingdom needs a queen, desperately. How dare... Your Highness, it is only for the affairs of the kingdom that we beg you to wed again. Very well. But my wife had a last wish that I must marry only a woman as beautiful as her. Your Highness, we shall send our messengers far and wide to heed the late Queen's wish. So the courtiers and noblemen of the kingdom sent messengers to kingdoms far and wide. But no one was as beautiful as the Queen had been, and years rolled by. One day, the King's long-lost friend came to visit him. Johannes. Ah, Garrison. You can call me Victor. Send for the princess. It has truly been so many years. So many years without her. Ah, here she is, my daughter. Ma, she looks just like the queen. The same golden hair, the same heavenly beauty. She looks just like the queen. The words his friend said struck the king hard, and he arrived at a decision. Finally, the promise he had made to the dying queen would be fulfilled. The king summoned his courtiers to the court. The queen wanted that only a maiden as beautiful as her should become the new queen of our kingdom. I am delighted to announce that I have found a lady just as beautiful as her. The only lady as beautiful as her is her own daughter, my princess. She shall ascend the throne as the queen, and she shall be married to the son of the prime minister, who shall become king after I am gone. The princess was not happy to hear of this, so she decided to avoid getting married by asking for something impossible. Father, what is this I hear? It was your mother's wish, my dear. But how can I marry someone I do not even know? It was your mother's wish. But... Enough! I have made my decision. All right! I shall marry the Prime Minister's son, provided I get the four things I ask for. Whatever you wish will be given. Then I want three dresses, one as golden as the sun, one as silver as the moon, and the third as shiny as the stars. And finally, I want a cloak, 
made of a thousand things of the forest, without hurting a flower, a bird, or a beast. Very well, daughter. Your wish will be done. So the king called the best weavers of the kingdom and asked them to weave the dresses. He summoned the best soldiers of his army and asked them to collect material for the cloak. The princess thought that she had asked for something quite impossible, and hence she would not have to marry the prime minister's son. But lo, call it magic or call it a miracle, the weavers were able to spin a dress as golden as the sun, another as silver as the moon, and the third as shiny as the stars, and a cloak made of fallen feathers and dried leaves and twigs so that no creature was hurt. They also gave the princess a magical walnut in which all the four garments could be folded and kept. My dear daughter, all that you wished for has been created. Now you shall get married to the Prime Minister's son. But father, how can I marry someone I barely even know? You promised. Father, the reason you could not find a queen as beautiful as mother was because you loved her and she was the most beautiful to you. That is what mother meant when she said, love makes people look beautiful. How can... Enough! If you cared for your mother, you would fulfill her wish. You shall get married tomorrow. But the princess could not marry a man she did not even know. So she decided to go away from the palace. I am sorry, father. Someday you will understand. The princess wandered across the country, in villages and forests. One day, tired, she found a hollow tree and fell asleep inside it. As she was fast asleep, the king of the country happened to pass there. His soldiers saw the strange being sleeping inside the hollow of the tree and told the king about it. Your Highness, there is a strange creature inside the hollow of the tree, as big as a human, but wearing a cloak stranger than anyone has ever seen. Bring her to the palace. So the soldiers went back to the hollow of the tree and woke up the princess. Wake up! Who are you? I am a creature without home or hearth. Come with us to the palace. You shall find work there. So the princess went into the palace where she was given a small room below the stairs. And she worked as the kitchen girl helping the cook for months. One day the king had a feast. After all the preparations were done and the feast began, the princess asked the cook, Sir, all the work is done here. May I please go and see the ball? I promise I shall not enter the banquet. All right, but make sure you come back within half an hour to clean up the ashes in the kitchen. Thank you, sir. I shall. The princess ran to her room, cleaned up the soot from her face and hands, removed the dress as golden as the sun from her walnut, and let her golden hair down and went to the ball. As soon as she entered, everyone was mesmerized by her stunning beauty, and the king would dance with no one else but her. When half an hour was over, I must leave now, your highness. But wait! The princess vanished in the throng of people and rushed back into her room, put on her forest cloak, and covered her face and hands with soot once again, and went back to work in the kitchen. I am back, sir. Shall I start cleaning up the ashes? No. The ashes can wait. First, prepare soup for the king. Yes, sir. So the princess prepared the soup for the king. She also put her golden ring in the bowl, poured the soup over it so that the ring could not be seen, and sent the soup to him. The king had never had such delicious soup ever before. He found the ring and sent for the cook. Did you make the soup tonight, cook? Your Highness, all the cooking in the kitchen is my responsibility. Yes, but did you actually make it? This soup certainly does not taste like yours. Is there a problem, Your Highness? Yes, this soup is better than any soup I have ever tasted before. 
This is definitely not your cooking. The kitchen girl prepared it for you, my lord. Call her. So the princess was called to see the king. Did you make the soup? Yes, your highness. Is this yours? How can a poor kitchen girl like me have such a ring, your highness? You remind me of someone I met at the ball today. Very well, the soup was delicious. Thank you. My pleasure, your highness. A few days later, there was another ball in the palace. Once again, the princess asked the cook for permission to watch the ball. This time, she put on her dress as silver as the moon. The king danced with her, but as soon as half an hour was up, she disappeared and became a kitchen girl once again. I am back, sir. Shall I start cleaning up the ashes? No, the ashes can wait. First, prepare soup for the king. Yes, sir. This time, the princess took her golden necklace and put it at the bottom of the bowl and poured the soup over it so that it could not be seen and sent it up to the king. Hmm, the soup is the best I have ever had. What is this? A necklace? Send for the cook and the kitchen girl. When the, the cook the kitchen girl got there... Did you prepare the soup tonight? Yes, your highness. Is this yours? How can a poor kitchen girl like me have such a necklace, your highness? You remind me of someone I met at the ball today. Very well. The soup was delicious. Thank you. My pleasure, your highness. The king couldn't help but wonder about the mysterious kitchen girl and the lady he had met at the ball. He could not shake the feeling that they were the same person. So, when the time for the next ball arrived, he decided he would find out the truth. Sir, all the work is done here. May I please go and see the ball? I promise I shall not enter the banquet. All right, but make sure you come back within half an hour to clean up the ashes in the kitchen. Thank you, sir. I shall. The princess wore her dress as shiny as the stars and went to the ball. The king would dance with no one else but her. And while she danced, the king slid the ring he had found the first day on her finger. The princess did not realize. Half an hour went by. I must leave now, your highness. Tonight the music will go on for just a little while longer. But I... Please. The music went on for longer, and so the princess hardly had any time to change into the kitchen girl again. She did not even see the ring on her finger. She ran into the kitchen. Where were you? The king is waiting for his soup. I am so sorry. I shall make it as soon as I can. The princess put the golden bangle in the bowl and covered it with the soup and sent the soup up to the king. The king called for her. Did you prepare the soup tonight? Yes, your highness. Is this yours? How can a poor kitchen girl like me have a bangle like this one, your highness? But then how can a poor kitchen girl like yourself have this ring? Your highness! You are the lady who I have been dancing with. Who are you? And then the princess told the prince everything about her life. Why did you not tell me all this the first time you met me at the ball? Because I wanted to see whether you are only stricken by my beauty or whether you do love me enough to be patient and find out about me, even when you see me as a kitchen girl. For my mother said, love makes people look beautiful. I love you, and I wouldn't care if you were truly a kitchen girl. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Finally, the princess had found her true love. She married the king, her father, too, was invited for the wedding, and the princess and her husband lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>